Just go and see. Okay, so we are live now. And um, welcome all, and thank you very much for choosing to join this live broadcast of Unplugged today. And thank you to everybody who, who joins us regularly. We have some people who join us, rain or shine, and it's actually raining right now. So thank you very much for, for, for joining us regularly. And thank you for all those who go back and listen to the replay. We truly do appreciate you. Thank you so much. And welcome to all our new listeners. It is a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, okay. So please share this broadcast. It's short. We are just asking you, please share this broadcast and follow us at Julia Jacks Consulting on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have so many resources on our YouTube channel, and I think it can be easier for you to join. You know, very many resources for aspiring and experienced brand builders. Afyon, welcome. Afyon, I, I think I need to give you a prize. You're almost always the first person. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being so regular with us. Okay, so we are continuing with our Very Well Made in Nigeria series. And today we are digging in to see what are some of the um, pillars that can be used to create strong brands in Nigeria. And the pillar that we're looking at today is customer care. So we're looking at customer care as a brand building strategy. Oh, welcome. Welcome, sis Ibim. Thank you <laughs> very much. Oh, thank you for your kind words. Mm. So to help us deconstruct this topic of customer care as a brand um, building strategy or pillar, we have a certified customer service professional and trainer, Onoye Beridugo. Now full disclosure for those who know me and even those who don't know me, Onoye is my BFF. If you don't know what BFF is, well, sorry. <laughs> you know, she's my BFF. But she's not here because she's my BFF. She's here because she is a professional in her field. And um, she's the best person I know to talk about this. You know, oh, no, you're very welcome to Unplugged. Thank you. And thank you for accepting to be here. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Onoye. Give you her, her CV is massive, but I'll just give you a snippet. Onoye Beradugo is the lead facilitator of Simple Workshops. Simple Workshops is a training company which focuses on the training of customer service, personal development, and small business growth. She is a certified customer service leader and trainer with the Service Quality Institute of America. She is also certified as a trainer by the Center for Management Development in Nigeria. Her work experience spans communication, education, banking, marketing, and the public service sectors. So she really has a lot. She has a wealth of experience to, to share with us. Onoye is driven by her passion to improve customer service delivery and by her personal commitment to lifelong learning. She likes reading. She likes traveling. She likes meeting people. She likes talking to people. And she says she's still a work in progress in the use of social media, but is courageously taking steps to tackle and take down social media, despite her fears, you know. So, Honore, welcome. Thank you. Okay. So, we have different terminologies, customer service that we, we tend to throw around, customer service, customer care, customer experience. Are they all the same or are they different? What, what, what do these things mean? Um, customer service, customer care, same things. Customer experience goes a step further in terms of focusing on the specific experience of a particular activity or encounter. 
but customer care, customer service, just interchangeable words where it sounds very warm and comfy. You use customer care if you don't want to keep using the word service. Okay. Okay. Um, could you just amplify what customer experience is? Um, when you talk of customer experience, it's more of the service providers discussing the kind of experience that they want the customer to have. What do they? What do you want your customers to feel about you once they leave your your office, they leave your shop, or they leave you after an experience with you? They leave your website or they leave your social media page. How do you want? What experience do you want them to go away with? What um, what's the word I'm going to use? What um, feelings? Because mo most of customer service work is a work of relationships and feelings. That's basically. It. I, I I think what you've said is actually very um, key. Like, how do we feel? Because I, I now get a sense that customer experience feeds back directly into customer service, especially since a lot of the service these days is uh, either hybrid or online totally, you know? So how we feel when we get to somebody's um, uh, page, can, can make a difference. I mean, would you agree? Yes, I totally agree. The thing is, try to look at your service through your customer's eyes. How is the customer going to feel when he, he tries to get into your page? Is it easy? Is it difficult? What steps does he have to take? And how can you make those steps simpler, less stressful, to give him a better experience of your service? Well, we'll get back to the virtual thing okay. very, very soon, you know, because really that's that's the, it's not even the future, it's the now, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, Pagibi, welcome. Pagibi, yeah, I can see your comment that it's lagging. Thank you for, for hanging on. We are hanging on here. It's it's raining, so I'm sure there'll be a little bit of distortion to the um, to the broadcast, but please hang in because we, we are hanging. We are Nigerians. We, we hang. We hang tight. Yes, okay. service or not, we manage ourselves. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So this, um, we're looking at, um, this is part of the series Very Well Made in Nigeria. Okay. And um, we feel that um, it's very important for us to have some things, apart from having an amazing product, it also has to be delivered in a certain way. Now, in saying that, I want to, I want you to have in the background whether customer service is a global, how would I call it? Or maybe the customer experience, is this a global phenomenon or feeling? And I want you to, to look at that against the background of um, Sam Walton's quote, which incidentally I took from your, <laughs> your, your, your social media page. Now, Sam Walton is the founder of the famous um, Walmart range of stores. And what he said is that there is only one boss, the customer, and he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down, simply by spending his money somewhere else. So there's only one boss, and that one boss is the customer. Is customer. And he can fire everybody. Everybody. Mm. Is that something, would this apply only in the U.S. and other similar places where performance indices are monitored closely, or would it apply here, do you think? It's applying everywhere in the world, especially here in Nigeria now, it's beginning to apply because people are working harder for their money and have also woken up to the fact that I don't need to take rubbish from you because I want to buy your product or service when I can get it from somebody else easier. So... Every customer that comes in, you should look at them as having your salary, having your profit in their pocket. And you need to do everything you can do to make them spend it. If they change their minds and they don't spend it, your staff are not, you staff are not going to contribute one cup of extra from your salary. So, okay, let me give it to the company that this customer, I mistakenly drove in the way. So it is a universal phenomenon. It's just coming to Nigeria now because people are becoming more aware of their rights. Like, hey, I'm the customer, I'm Kingo. All that thing they used to say, it is really true. 
if I don't spend my money here, I can go somewhere else. They will lose the business and they really must be nice to me. So that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Well, that's something that I believe the owners of the business here should um, should pay pay mind to. And um, it's something that I am paying mind to, too, because um, everybody has an option. Everybody has an option. And customers will vote with their with their wallets their feet. and their feet. Yes. <laughs> you know. Leave yes. you where you are and go where they go. Okay, where they are loved and cared for. Okay. <laughs> so tell me what are the tell us, what are the basics of um sorry, I'm looking for my pen. I had it here a minute ago. Okay. okay. What are the basics of customer care that any aspiring uh, brand or even an experienced brand should um pay attention okay. to okay yeah. um well this, this i think this just dovetails into my personal uh, best definition of customer service i'm not going to say it but i'll just pick out five of the highlights one it says okay. that um, customer service is uh, dependent on the ability of knowledgeable capable enthusiastic staff Oh, please, yeah, you need to slow down because I have to take notes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Capability of knowledgeable. Okay. Capable, ability of knowledgeable, okay. capable, enthusiastic staff to work, to deliver service okay. to your customers, okay? And they should be able to deliver this service to internal and external customers. So that's point number two. The first one is the employees themselves on their own. They should be knowledgeable, capable, enthusiastic, and then they should be able to deliver this service to both internal and external staff. A lot of the times, um, let me digress here, people focus more on external staff, forgetting that if your staff are not happy, your internal staff are not happy, they will not treat your external staff well. You understand? It's how you, it's how you behave to me that I'm going to behave towards your customers. So yes. even if you take it in terms of what we do to house helps, if you are mean to your house help and you're leaving your children, oh. definitely she's going <laughs> to take it out on them. Same thing in the business world. You are mean to me, shout at me. I'm going to do the same to your customers. Maybe that's how you like it. So that's the second one. Knowledgeable, capable, enthusiastic. Those are the characteristics that your good employees should have. They should know about your business, your product, your service. They should be capable of handling any questions, any situation, and they should be enthusiastic. Nobody wants to be served with somebody whose face is always, oh, good morning, sir. Can I help you? Because customers are not listening to what you say. They are listening to your body language. Your mouth might be saying, oh, welcome. How are you? And your body language is saying, I beg, I beg, I beg. You don't disturb me. Um, the other thing is that... Um, they should be able to satisfy identified and unidentified needs of the customer. Yes, the customer mm -hmm. is coming to you for a product or service. You know that is what he wants, but he also has unidentified needs that you must be, you must be se uh, sensitive to. Things like being greeted properly, things like being respected, things like not being thrown around. Okay, just hold on. Go and meet John. Um, hold on. Go and meet Mary. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good customer service. So they have intended needs. Yes, I want your product. I want your service. But they also have unintended needs that even they do not know. But if you study your customers properly and carefully, you will know that, oh, ma, it's um, August. So you know that you have to start planning towards the children going back to school. Ah, we're getting to Christmas. Come and start shopping in November so that the price increases don't meet you. Those kind of information and stuff. Unintended. But it's what the customer would like. Ah, please. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I forgot. Now, all of this, if properly done in customer service, will lead to positive word of mouth publicity and return okay. on your business. Now, this positive word of mouth publicity is more in terms of on a daily basis, all of us are recommending. I am taking notes. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Ah. You're so, talking about good customer service leads to um, word of mouth publicity, so right? Positive word of mouth publicity. Okay, because there is negative. Oh, there is negative. <laughs> okay. Yes, there is negative. 
and it also goes on to giving you a return on business. Okay. This is my all-time favorite definition of customer service. And if you put it to real life, you will see. If I have a bad experience with you, I'm not going to tell anybody anything positive about you. I want to okay. go to XYZ restaurant. Don't go. I had running stomach last week from eating there. Or, or you say, well, um, I will borrow you at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> or I will, I will not say anything. I will just leave you. <laughs> no, no, no. Go, no, go and experience it for yourself. No, <laughs> yes. most times, most times, if you get good service, you it's assumed, so you don't bother to tell anybody really. But if you come to me, oh, where can I buy books? I say, oh, go to this place. They have a wide ring. Go to that place. But that's because you ask. Sometimes it comes out of me unintentionally. Oh, I just got something that wrapper that we're looking for. They have variety there. Just go there. Other times, oh my goodness, if it's a complaint, everybody will hear. As I come out from your premises, as I come off the internet from your website, I'm complaining. <laughs> that website is just the it's difficult to navigate. It's hard. Yeah. I can't do ah, those people say, oh, Madam, what you is it? And your name is just going down, 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 and you don't have an opportunity to correct that impression. That, that's just the problem with negative publicity. Well, you know, sometimes people do have that opportunity. This has happened to me many times. But I want to share this particular experience with um, um, a restaurant, you know. Okay. And um, I ordered um, something with chips. I can't remember what, what it was. But it, it had a side of chips. And the chips were soggy and kind of, soggy and, and kind of burnt at the same time. Mm. So I complained. I asked the mm -hmm. server. I said, these chips are not fresh. You know, you probably reheated, uh, reheated it. And I said, no. And the owner came back and said, so I said, where's your, where's your manager? Where's your owner? And it, it, it became a whole parade of different. And the, the owner said, oh, um, these things are fresh. I know I got a new chef and everything. I said, OK, so I am the stupid one for coming. OK, let me pack my things and go, you know? and." Um, in the process, he now I went with my husband, and my husband calmed me down. I, I, I tend to pop off at bad, bad customer service, so he kind of calmed me down. <laughs> and then the owner went back into the kitchen and emerged with a plate of chips that I could see from afar was fresh. Fresh. Yeah. So That's why? Because he was there. Yeah, but I, otherwise I would have walked away and not paid. But he had even resisted. So. This is my question. Why do owners of business, if they know that the customer can make or break them, and I'm being very intentional about not mentioning their names because it's on the tip of my tongue right now. But Please <laughs> help, not, them. help them. I'm not mentioning sure their names. No, no. But I remember telling them, I, said, I don't think you'll be in business for very long with this attitude. You better change your attitude. You know? But why would people who own businesses not pay attention to that because you know we are talking about mainly growing businesses yeah. and many of these businesses have maybe not more than six staff if you're really lucky okay. mm -hmm. so many of them i believe would fall into this category of taking their eyes off the ball so something something is either it's not important they don't realize it's important or they don't know how to do it You've hit the nail on the head. They don't realize it's important. A lot of people just assume because they've opened a business and people are coming in and there are a lot of people coming in, there's no need. Ah, we must be giving good service. That's why people are coming. But they don't understand that when people fall through the cracks, who hate your service, who get dissatisfied, they're falling through your cracks one at a time. You don't understand. You keep seeing new people coming in because your marketers are working hard to bring in new people, create awareness, your social media pages and all. And you don't really see that I, I, this person that came hasn't been coming or hasn't returned. This person, they don't really see the need for it. They just assume that business is good. By the time they realize that things are really bad, business has closed down. It lost almost all its customers. Is it also possible that people start these businesses? I mean, you get some money, maybe a lump sum of money, you have an idea, mm. 
and you just say, okay, Onoye is doing this kind of business. Let me go and do it. It can't, it can't be so hard. So you don't yes. take time to do the, the, back, the background work. Oh, that also happens. But generally, I think that what happens to us in Nigeria mainly is that we have a good idea and we believe that, ah, customers will come. Or we see somebody who is hammering in this business. <laughs> yes. 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 We love, ha but we love hammering. <laughs> is, the thing is, and I will say it now, is look for what your potential customers want. Look for the problem that your skills, your talents can solve. And then create a business around that problem with the solutions you have. It will not be hard for you to get customers, and you will, it will be easier to give them the service that they require because you started off with their needs in the front of your mind. I think, that, that, that's, that's, I think that's extremely wise. Thing. That's wisdom there. Look for the problem yeah. that your skills and talents can solve and create a business around it solve. because that's something that you're committed to. Yes. That's that's, that's I mean, very I remember, I, I remember the, um, I think her name is Ito, your last guest, who did um, yes. um, daycare, yes. she's doing corporate daycare. She could have really sat down and decided to do nanny service, give people nannies, vet them and all. But she looked at her industry and looked for the problem areas and then provided the solution. What The first thing she started off with was going to offices to open crashes so that, look, crashes. you own everything you want, but let me come and do this service for your females. They will benefit. Your business will benefit. There will be less running home to go and check let, and see where it got her. She could have sat behind, opened an office, and had a nanny agency. Okay, you want nanny? Come. Come, pay. And, but no, she went into <laughs> her industry. Why are you laughing? She went into her industry. <laughs> I hope it's your race not here. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you, you're very right because she was a banker and then she was also a mother. So these experiences, would there will be things that she would have um, experienced. You're, you're yes, so right. Yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. So for new you're people so right. or even for old people, take a step back. Look at your business. Look at this. the problems that your customers are having that you are not solving. If, if I can go a step further, in this line then, also look at the frequently asked questions from your customers. Okay. Because they also give you an idea, a direction of how people think of the problems that they are having and the solutions they would like. So that instead of, for some people, you don't need to open a restaurant. You need to just do a direct office supply. Will bring the food to your office. You have a canteen there. You can, if you don't have to come through, you don't need all that overhead. If you really sit down and assess the needs of your customers, listen to frequently asked questions, and then you know, just take a step back. For people who already have been in business, take a step back, reevaluate your business because the customer is king. Whether we we say it with uh, derision, oh, the customer is king. But, Customers are king. You and I are customers at some points in our lives and are also service or product providers at another point in time. But our daily bread is from providing a service. So we must Absolutely. understand that truly the customers are, are, are kings. And queens. And queens. And queens. No, for, for this purpose, we'll, we'll, we'll just take kings, you know. We'll just be, we'll just be the top of the ladder, you know. Um, we, we have a couple of questions here and comments, but I, okay. I want to take, um, just to reiterate what you've said, that uh, we all need to take a step back. When you're starting your business, you also have to think, how am I going to deliver this service? Because also the way you deliver a service online, you know, if you're going to deliver, deliver a service online, there's a difference. You know, and you want to stand out because I believe the purpose of building a brand is to stand out, to be different, to create to a value, out. to yeah. solve to a be problem, remembered. to be remembered. Yes. And it's yeah. very important yeah. that we are not remembered for bad things. Very, very important. Very important. But you said something about staff being knowledgeable, capable and enthusiastic. And yes. I remember on one of your um, training programs, we talked about, um, uh, you, you mentioned um, uh, restaurant staff being able to 
tell, recommend what the dish of the day is and, and things like that, you know. Yeah. I know abroad, I know abroad, a lot of, when you go there, people ask, oh, yeah, this is a dish of the day, or you could try this if you like this, you know, that kind of thing. Even um, for those who like wines and spirits, they offer you what can go. Why do we not do that here? Or do we do it? That's it. that's the, the question, you know. Very few people do it. The others think that it's a waste of money. And tell them we have jollof rice. And then somebody's asking me, <laughs> what do you have in your jollof rice? They say, yeah, it's regular, normal jollof rice. I say, no. Do you, do you put mushrooms in it? Do you have... He says, sir, it's a, it's a good jollof rice. It doesn't sound intelligent. It doesn't sound as if they know. A lot of people here don't think it's important for their staff, for restaurants to be able to, they don't understand that people come in and ask for recommendations and would actually like to try things out. For me, I go to restaurants and I want to try things that I can't cook at home. Many people do that. They don't want to eat the same thing they can eat at home outside. Absolutely. And then you're asking a waiter, um, so um, how is this your egusi? Or how is this your, what, what's that thing they were used to make? A cup of vin? Cockabra, yes. <laughs> what is inside? And they don't know. And I think that um, if people begin to take their customers' uh, needs into, you know, take their customers' needs into, what is the word for it now? Consideration. Into consideration, thank you. If they can take their customers' needs into consideration, they will now reevaluate how they treat their staff. You won't be, you see, it's not enough for you to go out and be getting customers to come. Oh, come on, my friends, bring your own friends. And then you take them in and your staff kill them. And you don't know that your staff are killing them. You have to train your staff. People complain, eh, when we train, they spend maybe six months, two months, two weeks, and they're off. It doesn't matter. For those six months, two weeks, two months that they're with you, let them give the best service possible. You will reap the benefits in future because... Eventually, they will go somewhere and they're exhibiting the skills that you have trained them on. And your name will also be going, oh, yes, I remember when I worked with um, JJC, that was where I learned XYZ. When I was working here, this is what I gained from it. But most people think about the problems of training. If that is your problem, then do in-house training. Have somebody in-house who can train properly. And then if the people spend maybe three months with you, six months, then you know they're going to stay for the long haul. You've evaluated them. But you don't train at all. Yeah, you're, you're just wasting your money. All the efforts <laughs> you've put into your social media advertising, normal, regular advertising, word of mouth, everything, you've wasted it because the people will not deliver. Um, let me just go a step further and say something. I've mentioned it before about how you cook. The way you, you attend to your staff, I've said it before, affects the way they attend to your customers. If they're not trained and you're not okay. interested, they will also give them that. I beg, I don't care. You've gone to restaurants where they are shouting at us, oh, nah, beg, come, yes. come, come and give me. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Last week, I went to um, a supermarket and people just crowded around and I asked the lady, where is the kid? I said, stand anywhere, stand in. And I said, no, that's oh. not right. That's not right. <laughs> And she just gave me one look and one attitude. And then the women who were who had actually who were not on the line, I said, No, we were here before you. I said, Madam, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the cashier. But I kept quiet and I let them do what they and then I was now talking to the cashier, trying to advise her. It's not your business, so it doesn't matter to you because at the end of the month they will pay you. So that is your attitude. And she was still giving me I said, Madam, you will lose your job. I'm a customer service trainer, I don't like this thing. Because these are the people that spoil people's businesses. And I had to go and report her. She thought I was joking. I reported her. You but did. After I left, Excellent. After I did, I now felt bad that, hey, how many people Why? need the job? How many yes. people? She doesn't know? need the job. She doesn't need it. But I went back again to the manager to say, ah, please don't fire her. I'll just talk to her. Maybe you'll train her. Listen. She still gave me the attitude she was giving you, so she will answer my query before she comes back. But let me know. I, I, when I went the next time, I was almost on her queue when I realized I just turned my cat away and ran somewhere else. I don't want problems from anybody. <laughs> <laughs>
We have really a lot of questions. I think one of the things that um, we had talked about in, in the course that you, you ran was that um, people are a bit scared, or maybe they don't even think about it, to um, let their staff taste, let's take restaurants, taste the menu. You know, maybe have a little tasting menu for staff so that they can actually recommend, like, okay, this one is nice. Or if you don't like, like rice and you're on a, in the Fit Farm group, you could try bulgur, you know. We have, my wellness coach is on this call, so I have to be. I don't know if it's bulgur <laughs> rice or bulgur. <laughs> you know, or you can, you can have a salad and we can have this kind of dressing and stuff like that. Because we get this from people elsewhere, and some of these people who are servers outside here, they're, they're students. So yes. obviously there is a need to give orientation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is. From the beginning. They're absolutely, they're absolutely correct. And people should incorporate. If you know that, it's part of the frequently asked questions. Do it. But Can how do they get these frequently asked questions? Who, who collates them? Actually, because we want people to be practical, to, to live here with tips of okay. what to do. Yes. Every week, you must have a debriefing session with your staff. Most people already have meetings. Part of the meeting agenda should be what were the questions you were asked more than three times this week? What were the questions you were asked more than two times this week? And let's put them together. At the end of the month, we, let's put them together. Let's, how did you answer those questions? Oh, no, 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 that isn't how you shall. Next time, answer it this way. Frequently asked questions, one, two, three. At the end of the month, collate. At the end of the, um, of the quarter, collate them together and then incorporate them into your policies. You must have standard operating policies, policies practices yeah. that your, your business works with. Incorporate them into it. Use them as tools to improve the service that you're giving. Okay. Yeah. I hope you're listening. I hope you're taking notes. I've taken notes. Please ask, make it part of the staff meeting. Mm -hmm. We have this, um, it's a question comment. It's a bit long from Geraldine. Thank you for your comment, Geraldine. Owners of a lot of SME businesses are largely ignorant of what customer service delivery actually is. They don't know think. or think mm -hmm. that it's actually impact the bottom line for good or for bad. I'm wondering if this is a brand of the typical aggressive ignorance or arrogance, as in refusal to humble oneself and learn. I don't know about typical aggressive arrogance, but no, yeah, over to you. <laughs> um, I think that uh, people just assume. So it's a typical behavior of thinking, I have a good business, I have a good product, I have a good service, people must participate and take it on. They don't look at their service through their customers' eyes. Sometimes when I train, I tell people, close your eyes and let's look at your business through your customers' eyes. How do they log on to get to you online, for instance? Is it easy to access your website? How many layers of security have you put in place that I must cross before I can get there? The things that you are offering there, if I click a button, does it take me directly to where I'm going to take action? Or are you still going to push me somewhere else? That's one aspect. If it's a physical location, close your eyes, think of how the customer gets there. Because from your gate, from your gate man, he has an impact on customer service. From the doorman, another level of impact. From even the way you talk to me as I'm packing my car, are you helpful? Ah, Madam, there's no space here. Ah, you, you, you will come back again. Ah, I don't have to come back. There are other places that I can go to and I've gone. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at your customer's um, steps as he walks into your business, as he tries to get service from you and figure out how can I make it easier and simpler. But most people, like I've said, just as you know, oh, I have a business, so customers will come. And they don't bother about this customer service delivery. How is it done? You must have a uniform way of handling issues. Okay, you have uh, difficult customers. Have you trained your staff as to how to handle those difficult customers? 
or you just tell them, hey, handle, then you, you now have a customer who is upset, aggravated, annoyed, is busy screaming, and the staff is screaming back, ah, madam, relax now, I've, I've, I will attend to you. Ah, lower your voice now. So, people, the owners are usually not there when these kind of things are taking place. Most times, if the owners are there, they will come out shouting at their staff. Ah, come on, shut up. Don't talk to staff like that. And dress you down. Plus, your grandmother, your great-grandfather, everybody. Is that the way you want? Is that the way your customer service should be delivered? No. No. So, people are not aware. Jerry hit the nail on the head. That they are not aware about what customer service delivery means. And it's not rocket science. It's just having basic courtesy in treating uh, attending to your customers is basically it. So putting them front and center yeah. at all times. Totally. Totally. We have a, a comment from Gloria Rose Nash. Thanks for joining, Gloria. Says that customer care is also quite complex in our terrain as it's very important to take into consideration background, culture, exposure. For some, a simple sorry is enough. For others, more is required. In fact, I want to just, before you mention that, I'd, I'd like you to comment on it, but you see, this is one of my bugbears. I hate that sorry as a strategy. It really upsets me. You say sorry the first time, I accept it. You say sorry the second time, I accept it. All of a sudden, all they're doing is being a sorry bunch of people, you know? I'm like, how, how long are we going to keep being sorry? But I agree that the, and then those people who just call you mommy and think when they call you mommy, everything is going to be, okay, I mean, I, I can't deal. I can't deal. What, why am I your mommy? How am I? <laughs> you how? know? Yeah. So yes, there are layers and things like that. There are cultural nuances. And um, there are people who believe that when you come in, you must take their bags. You know, that's a cultural nuance. There are some people who want to go down on the floor. There, are, you know, all kinds of things, you know. And even this mommy thing, I mean, I, as much as it aggravates me, I, I, I've learned to kind of blanket out. But, but that's sorry as a strategy. It's not working. So I think that for business owners who are here, you have, customer service is about being creative. It's not one size fits all. You have to be creative. You have to anticipate what can go wrong and think of how you can solve it. What level, what latitude of power you can give. The other day I was reading about Amazon, somebody's experience with Amazon. He can never leave Amazon. He paid money in to get some books. The books did not arrive as and when due. He waited for a week, two weeks, and then he wrote to them that, look, I've given you people more than enough time, and these things have not arrived, and I'm tired, I need it, it. Before he could blink, they DHL'd an express, you know, set of books for him. Same exactly what he ordered. They didn't even call him back to say, ah, Oga, what did you, what books did you order? No, they went to their system, fished his name out, found his order. DHL, two, three days later, he had received the same books he asked for. A couple of days later, with an apology and even a $10 discount vouch, uh, voucher card, gift card to say, okay, anytime this is $10 for, do this. He was pleased. Next thing, his books finally arrived. And he called them to say, oh. So he now had books, two copies. He now had two copies. The books have arrived. Typical Nigeria would say, send back. Send it back. Do you know what they told him? No, 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 it's okay. We've really inconvenienced you. We're sorry. Please take them. You can give them to other people who may need. Do you think that man is going to leave Amazon and come to Onoye Beredugo and the Associates uh, Distribution Company? It's not possible. Because I would have told you, okay, I beg, don't vex. Send the new, the first set back since we are worried they're not interested they will take a loss in this but the benefits they're going to get over he's not going to leave them he will keep recommending them to people that, that's just the difference so you're saying um here in nigeria we believe generally and i'm not saying it as a hard and fast rule but we believe that saying sorry will help us out but over there they go beyond that's what what, what they mean when they say go the extra mile take the extra step Customer service is creative thinking. How can I make this my customer feel better? How can I serve him better that he will feel happier, feel you know good about spending his money with us? So when you have 
um, crisis situations, let me call them crisis, where you have customers that are upset, customers that are angry, customers that are difficult, what can you offer? But here, generally, we worry about our bottom line. If I give them a free meal now, it means that uh, I will not have, I will not make the profit I need to make. So you come, you are eating, and you see her inside, and you call for help. Or you go to a hotel, and the AC is not working. They take you to another room. The AC is working, but the heater is not working. And they want to take you to yet a third room. At that point in time, you will get up and say, you know what? I've had enough. I'm going. You've lost it. But how do you ameliorate that situation? You will collect the you have the customer's details anyway. You write an, a, a, an apology. You can offer a free night if you come back to Port Harcourt. Your In that same trip. place. <laughs> no, would have improved by then. We would apologize and explain that would have improved by then. You understand? But they don't even care. Uh, Oga, we have taxi service here. If you need a taxi to go, or you have to, a to airport. Mm -hmm. No, to the next hotel you want to go to. Uh, <laughs> It, it has happened not once, not twice. They, it's not their business, so they're not really too interested in solving this problem. But you okay. see, business owners so, must make that effort. I think you, you, you've, you've kind of circled back to the issue of the internal customer and having a sense of belonging in the business. Because yeah. if, you're, if you're treated right as an internal customer, you probably would have the feeling that you have a stake in the business. You but could stake, you yes. Could you expatiate on what and give examples on what internal customer is or could be? Okay. We have a gym. Let's use a gym. And we have our trainers. Our trainers are the face of the business. But the people who are behind, who are maintaining the equipment to make sure that the equipment are in top condition, the customers don't know them. They come out yeah. after the customers have gone. The person keeping the accounts books, the records, is not there. The cleaner cleaning the floors, making sure, washing the towels, making sure everything is neat and clean, nobody recognizes them. If as a business owner, you keep focusing on only the trainers who are like the face of the business, your internal customers are not happy. So, yes, somebody has spilled water somewhere. I will first of all drag my feet before I go to clean it up. Not knowing that my dragging my feet is also giving the customers a bad impression about the company. As I'm even going, I'm pulling the bucket, not minding that it's making a... I've been waiting there. I can't... Uh, I beg, I mean, more than oh, the mop is I, dirty. Yeah, the mop is dirty. Do you understand? But if everybody is... And I'm not saying taking care of in terms of money. Everything is not money. Just having basic respect, basic appreciation that you are... Contribution is very important to me. Don't, don't, don't mind that you're a cleaner. If you don't clean well, people will not come in because they will look. Ah, these people, their door is dead to you. Do you think their towels should be clean? Those kind of thoughts. So you must focus on your internal customers and make them happy. Make them feel part of it, have a sense of belonging, and know that they are also contributing to your bottom line, even if the customers don't see them. I think in some um, blue chips and the big corporates, they have service level agreements between different departments and units. And I think that's where you really have a big organization. Mm -hmm. But that helps you to know this is how we will be treated. This is how, these are the expectations. Mm -hmm. And I believe I've mentioned it before on, on Unplugged that um, there are many things we can learn from the blue chips. There's a reason why they're blue chips. They're, oh, yeah. yeah, there's a reason why they're big corporates, you know. Yeah. But we want to take another co comment here from Namdi. And Namdi, thank you for joining us. Says, um, one common problem, one common problem SMEs in Nigeria face is high staff turnover. It's not just um, SMEs. There's <laughs> high staff turnover generally, yes. Yeah. Especially low-level staff, i.e. staff earning 30K and below. The cost of engaging a trainer every time new staff comes might be expensive, given the frequency of turnover. How can entrepreneurs solve this issue? Okay, over to you. Okay. Um, two things. First of all, is the process of employment. 
what kind of people are you employing? Are they people who have the same values as your business? If you're a business that is, um, says, oh, we're going to deliver excellent service, we're going to give excellent service, we're going to, we're honest, we have integrity, we're going to do things professionally. When you are employing, look out for those characteristics during your um, interviewing process, that's one. Two, as Elias said that, um, have someone in-house that can train them. If you're not sure they're going to stay for so long, just to reduce costs, but you cannot say because they may leave, you will not train, no. Have someone that can interview them for a period of time and see. But you know what? Whether you, whether you offer them the best of everything or not, if a staff wants to leave you, he will leave. They're so, going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they will go. So my point is, think of the benefits they provide for your business in the time that they are there and train them appropriately. Don't think, oh, because I know they're going to go, let me leave them. If you leave them, they will spoil many things before they go and it will be harder for you to continue to grow your business. So you can't give up. You can only put um, strategies in place that can help you try to ameliorate it, but still train. That's what I would say. Still train. Um, there's a comment um, that um, Lola Kiyomi of Puma Garnet made when, yeah. when he guested on our show. And he said, um, many times we think that um, engaging cer certain services are more expensive than they actually are. And I believe that there are, yes, that, you know, engaging certain professional services. So like training, you might think, okay, I go to a simple workshop, for example, and they're going to charge me uh, 1 million. But, you know, you can actually, there are many, very, many, many creative ways of, of um, doing business. Yes, there are many creative ways of doing business. I'm not saying take her yam and coco yam and rice, so, you know, in exchange for customer. But that might be that might that might help, you know. But let's talk about it, and we can talk about payment terms. We can talk about discounts. We can talk about having regular training so that the person knows the professional offering you this service knows that there's an assurance that you will come call on me three, four times a year. So I don't have to take all my money at once. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a return customer. So every quarter you're going to um, train, you know. So that's a relationship, you know. Yeah. And that's, 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 you're putting the person on retainer, more or less. So that is something that gives them, um, the professional service provider, uh, a lot of comfort, you know. You know. Yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. There are creative ways to get about it. Sometimes you can even do um, CDs or recordings. Get someone to do a recording, a basic training recording that you can use to train your staff, train your staff, until they get to a certain level and you are sure that, okay, if nothing else, one year this person will be here. Then you can now, you know, invest, invest, put money yeah. out for the expensive one. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's true. And once you've trained them, you can get them to retrain because yeah. in retraining, they you you get to um, yeah, you, you're relearning. Okay, so we had the basics of customer care, like um, the, the, being knowledgeable, capable, and enthusiastic. Um, I don't know how we'll teach enthusiasm. I mean, I re I really don't know. <laughs> you know? And um, deliver service to internal, external customers satisfied and satisfy and identify the unintended needs of Un customers identified. unidentified needs of customers and good customer service leads to positive word of mouth publicity, publicity and gives return on business the other thing you said to us was take a step back and evaluate what you are doing yes. you know get feedback and stay on top of your business. If you can stay on top of how much money you're making or, and yeah. track it to the last yeah. T, then you should be able to track how many people are coming in. Have they increased? Mm -hmm. Have they decreased? Why did they decrease? Why did 
Okay, there, there's some people like uh, I I have bought things, well, I haven't bought anything from them in the past, like maybe let's say almost two years, and they haven't even called to say hey. No, yeah. no. people you buy food from they don't call, mm -hmm. and they don't know they don't care. what happened. Yes, yeah. people you get services from. There's some people that actually ask me, oh, what's your feedback? And I give the feedback, and they don't even there's no follow up conversation. So please. You know, it's it's don't don't do us wash. It's not wash. It's not the more you look, the less you see. You know, don't give the appearance of being professional. Go the whole hog. Go the whole hog. No, but, there's something you not, should just say. Okay, go ahead. Or Sorry. Follow on follow up, because for a lot of um, customers, the experience with people's promises in Nigeria, very very poor. We always promise, oh, we will get back to you. Oh, I will do this. We will do this. There's no follow-up. And the promise is just, you know, lip service. Oh, we are, it's, it's, it's really, really bad. It's really bad. If you make a promise, try and keep it. Write it down. Try and keep it. I will get back to and you. And close it out. Hours. And close yes. it out. I'll get back to you 48 hours. Get back to me in 48 hours. Don't just tell me. You are, not, you, you are not even thinking. You just say it and then move on to the next person. That's not good customer service. We need, you know, as a, as a business, as a company, we need to sit down and review all our processes and get them right. Follow-ups, very important. If I'm talking of this, I'll also want to quickly talk about collaborations. You are not going, if there are 100 people, let's say there are 100 people in Nigeria or in Portaco, let me use Portaco, they're in Portaco. You, as a tailor, as a service provider, as a mechanic, anything, you are not going to cater for the whole 100 people. You will do maybe 10, 15%. Out of that 10, 15%, maybe 5% are your core customers. And then the others are just, you know, people you've got to. If you don't have collaborative um, relationships in place, a day will come when your main customer needs you to do something and you are heavily overwhelmed in a different corner. Let me use a fashion designer doing bridal things. You are somebody who, you know, somebody has recommended you to fashion house A, that, oh, you make, you know, the whole gamut for mothers-in-law, for mothers, for the bridesmaids, for the bride, and they've come to give you the job. Then your good customer comes and wants a rush job in that period of time. And you know that if you stop the flow of your work, you will not be able to satisfy them. What do you do? Do you turn your customer away? The answer should be no. You should have collaborations with people, people who sow to your level, people who run businesses with the kind of ethical standards, with the kind of quality standards that you use for your own businesses. You should have collaborations with them such that that kind of situation comes up. Or you, want, you have certain goods. You don't have the size your customer wants, but you know that your competitor, in quotes, competitor, has it. You should have a good enough relationship to be able to send them there if you can't do it for them. But most times we look at um, our competitors or, or, or people in the same line of business with us as competitors, as if we're all competing for the as same. As rivals. Thing. As rivals, <laughs> that's the word. Yes, as rivals. So you cannot do business with them. But sometimes you get to a pain point, you get to a problem area, and you need to be able to tell your customer, you know what, let me send you to either um, Susan, or let me send you to Mary, or let me send you to John, or let me send you to Peter. Their quality of work is as good as mine. They even have the products in smaller sizes, so you can even test. Or if you like, I can call them and I will you know, get it for you. But right now, I can't do that. No, for us, most of us think if I can't do it, uh, just wait now, when I can do it, I will call you back. We need to have collaborative links, linkages, relationships that will better serve our customers. We're not competing against people. We're competing against ourselves. Can we yeah. improve against what we did last week, last month? How much better is our service? How much better, how satisfied are our customers? You can't serve the whole 100 people in your community. You can't. No, you can only do possible. 10, 15% efficiently, effectively. Then when you, you know, so I, I just wanted to make that point up that even as follow-ups in keeping your word, also look at um, collaborations. 
I, I agree, and uh, referrals, because um, I remember when we started off in advertising the business, there were some businesses that we got um, referred to from mm -hmm. more established agencies at the time, yeah. Yeah. which either they felt they didn't have the capacity or they didn't want to be bothered with those kind of businesses, and they sent them to us, and they were hungry. Yeah, small, you know? small. Yes, yes, and we were hungry to show what we could mm -hmm. do, so we took it on, and... The, the, the thing about collaboration is that you have to be sure that those people have the capacity, you know, and we also have to be very, um, how do I call it, truthful and able to say no to the, our customers, you know, and explain to them, say no in a way that they feel good and say, you know what, I need to give you my 100% attention and I can't do it at this point in time because this business came through. Do you want to wait or can I refer you to someone that I know is going to take excellent care of you? Mm -hmm. I, I bet you nine times out of ten, mm -hmm. if it's a good customer, a loyal customer, they'll say, I'll wait. Mm -hmm. But if it's a customer in a hurry, they can tell you, okay, refer me. You know, refer you may me. lose some customers that way, but you also yes. gain some customers that way. You gain a lot of respect. Yes. You must also you have a, a symbiotic lot of uh, relationship. Relationship. The other thing oh I my goodness I should, oh, no, I was just thinking that, oh my goodness, we thought that this was going to this was going to take a long time. It's already over, and this mm -hmm. I think this comment is one that you could look at training Geraldine, Geraldine, you're really firing on all the cylinders <laughs> training our yes. other business sustainability costs among others, please also mm -hmm. consider collabos grouping with other enterprises who yeah. have the same needs same and bring your individual costs. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes, totally agree. Totally, totally, totally. Very good advice, especially for people starting out. Very, very good advice. So instead of training ten people, five people in your, or three people in your group, you can collaborate with people in the mm -hmm. same line, but customer service will run through the, the 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 basics are the basics. The fundamentals are the fundamentals. Yes, you know, yes. you so you could just say, "Hey, ingredient too. oh yes, keep your secret. Don't, uh, be like Coca Cola. Keep that secret, secret. You know, secret, secret, <laughs> don't, yeah. share, don't share it. You know, but yes, get people together, and um, get people together, and um, you, you share the cost, and you can bring down the cost. You can negotiate. You know, you can always negotiate. Yes." Well, one, one last thing I would say in terms of very well made in Nigeria businesses is that you should learn to share collective knowledge about your customers within your organization so that if one person, one staff leaves, there shouldn't be a void. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you understand? As the institutional have, memory. Yes. That, that's a very good way of calling it institutional memory. You should have, you should be intentional about sharing collective knowledge. So these are company A's requirements and they need them every six months or they need them every two weeks or whatever. Share that knowledge. Everybody knows. So if somebody doesn't come to work or somebody leaves unexpectedly, the business can go on. You don't have, you are not giving room for breakages. Because most, um, what did I say, breakages? Oh my goodness. <laughs> you are not leaving room for Break breakages. Trans in transmission. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, we understand. <laughs> so just learn to share collective knowledge so that the business can go on seamlessly. That's, that's what I would say. Again, through having meetings and taking records. Documentation is key in business. Documentation is key. You must learn to keep records, both of what you're doing in terms of business and also of your customers. Documentation and sharing. I think... Um, very importantly, owners of small businesses, you know you can fall ill. Things can happen. And that's when we hear things like, oh, God, not deal. Oh, my dad not come since two weeks now. We're not going do anything. You know? And your business just collapses on your, on your, on your hands. Yes. Your business just collapses. I, I was reading about um, uh, the owner, well, the person who founded the, the Jo Malone range of perfumes, which I really like, and she had cancer at the time, and she had to um, step away from the business, you know, take care of the business, and she actually did sell that business. She started another one, 
um, about five or so years later. But how would she have done that if she didn't have a company ongoing that people could um, could uh, could even see it had value to um, to buy? You know, SOPs, SOPs, standard operating SOPs. principles, policies, practices, very important, very important. Guys, you need SOPs. It's not a curse word. It's, it's standard <laughs> operating principles. SOPs. SOPs Please policies, look for Onoye on IG and um, Facebook at Simple Workshops, you know, and um, go on her trainings. I, I, I can assure you that you will not regret it. Not one bit. But now I have two things. We, we, we are at the top of the hour, but I, I don't know if I can, I can let you go so quickly. Number one, <laughs> the first one is, what do you do when, because we all mess up, what do you do when you mess up? When uh, an interaction goes, goes south, goes wrong, how do you deal Accept. with it? Accept and apologize that you've made a mistake. I'm sorry. And make, don't do insincere, I'm sorry, but accept and then make amends immediately. Not next week, immediately take the steps to make the amends. If you cannot do it immediately, explain, I cannot do X, Y, Z now, but we will do it and follow up. But take, okay. accept the blame and make amends. So like that person, restaurant owner, could have given me that plate of food free, free. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he could have. I'm That's probably a voucher for, for, a free, for a free one next time. Uh, 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 uh. You know, you want yeah, because I, I literally had to beg for fresh chips, you know? Well, we're literally. learning, we're learning. We will fix we're learning. And the second one is, can you give us four things that related to customer service that um, any business or brand builder, any serious one, intentional brand builder should pay attention to, apart from the tips you gave us at the beginning, the fundamentals? Okay. I think, um, first of all, always evaluate your business through your customers eyes most important two i would say try to employ people who embody the qualities that you want in your company you're not going to get all of us cannot do the same but there should be some basic one two threes that must be there for you to know that they will they will take your business seriously um third thing Work on your collaborations for you to help your business, your customers, so that they're never left in the lurch. Uh, last but not least. Um, Is that mine? Have, have SOPs. Okay, have SOPs. Okay. Have SOPs, yes. Okay. I think, guys, if you want to know more about SOPs, please go to um, Simple Workshop. I'm going to type it here again. Um, at simple workshops, there's an end at the sorry, what did I do? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> at simple workshops, there's an S at the end of workshops. Right? Yes, yes, okay, all right. Please check her out there. She has a um, a training on right now in your customer's shoes, step into your customer's shoes, you know. And I thank you very much. We haven't been able to take all the questions, but there were comments like um, people will not do well when they are, they have not been paid even the little money that you promised them. And that is true, you know. So, um, guys, as it is always, we want to continue our conversation the time the time passes so quickly and we get so much so much information thank you very much for joining and um, as i said at the beginning please share um this broadcast follow us on youtube i mean i have so many friends here why do i not have more people following us on youtube follow us on youtube eh you follow me, I follow you. Eh? 
thank you very much everybody who came in and thank you for those who will join later we have heard a lot and learned a lot from Onoye and then um, I'm sure this is going to be another master class if I can beg her very well this will be another master class that we will have next year when we are going to be intentional about um, focusing on specific areas that brands need to 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 learn in order to improve thank you all for joining and then um, to my friend and my sister thank you very much Amaya. it's been great thanks thanks guys have a great day ahead bye thank you oh, the event, event show says i should beg you well okay i'm begging <laughs> you <laughs> i'm begging you please thank you bye. thank you very much bye